Now an update on an important fishing story in the Great Lakes region. We've chronicled the problems that a particularly invasive species, Asian carp, have posed for the past few years. But now scientists are thinking it may be time to come up with a new solution. Usher Qureshi of WTTW Chicago reports. You definitely don't want these voracious fish invading the Great Lakes, but now that they're in the Illinois River and here to stay, scientists are wondering if there's a profitable way to keep their populations in check. This is Stratton State Park, about 60 miles southwest of Chicago. This is kind of like the battleground right here. It's a story we've heard before. The fish are moving up from the Mississippi River into the Illinois and up towards the Great Lakes. But there's an ironic twist to this doomsday story, which could be solved by striking a delicate balance between economics and the environment. Vic Santucci is the Asian carp specialist for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Let them get the net out. We won't try to scare fish away. He and his team are evaluating whether the carp can be controlled the old-fashioned way, by catching them. They're trying to drive fish into uh, one of their commercial nets, and that's contracted fishermen. The catch-22 is that while the ultimate goal is to fish down the populations to prevent ecological damage, there have to be enough Asian carp left to make the business lucrative for commercial fishermen. It's really driven by free market principles, you know, the, how much they can get for fish, how much it costs them to catch those fish, and that type of thing. And then you need a market, what, what can you do with the fish? Santucci says it's a numbers game. Removing Asian carp from this population downstream prevents strays from making their way up toward the electric barrier in the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal. This has been the Army Corps of Engineers' last line of defense to block the Asian carp from invading Lake Michigan and all of the Great Lakes. The consensus among scientists is that it works really, really well, but is probably not perfect. So if only a few Asian carp reach the electric barrier, it will probably repel them. But if thousands reach the electric barrier, some might slip through. Philip Willink, a senior research biologist at the John G. Shedd Aquarium, says the focus now needs to be on developing ways to prevent the fish from breeding near the electric barrier, because smaller juvenile fish are more likely to slip through the blockade. And one of the ways to do that is to sponsor commercial fishermen to go out there and try to catch as many as they can. Today, Gary Shaw is one of 10 commercial fishermen who's allowed to fish these backwaters, accompanied by state biologists. Pound fishing with gill nets the best way to get them right now. It's not a bad haul. He's approaching 50, I'd say. According to the Army Corps of Engineers, Asian carp are capable of eating 20 to 120 percent of their body weight each day. But for commercial fishermen, big fish don't always translate into big money. So one of the problems with getting people interested in eating Asian carp is they happen to have a lot of bones in some strange places, so they're really hard to fillet. Add to that the common misperceptions that these fish don't taste very good because people assume they're bottom feeders, and you have a brand problem. Schaefer Fisheries in Thompson, Illinois, is addressing both those problems. Ever since the fish first turned up, the company has been looking for innovative ways to process and market Asian carp. On the fresh side, it would be the Asian community here in the U.S. And on the frozen side, it would be your ethnic communities around the world. The U.S. is the only country that does not eat a carp. Schaefer says that once all the bones are removed, an Asian carp fillet yields a relatively small and expensive 4 to 5 ounce portion that can't compete with more economical alternatives, which is why they have turned to alternative methods of extracting the meat. Basically, we run it through a mincing machine, which is a soft meat separator. The meat is then ground up, much like beef, and nothing is wasted. So this and removes all of the bones and anything that you don't want in the meat, so it separates yep. it completely. There's even your tendons, you can see, and all your bones are in there. And this will go to eventually become fertilizer. This will be organic fertilizer. In a structure next to the fish processing plant, a large machine the Schaefer's call the human body digests the discarded bones, skins, and tendons. Enzymes, much like those found in the stomach, break down the leftovers to create an organic liquid fertilizer. And business has been good. Schaefer says over the last six years, processing of Asian carp has more than doubled to about 15 million pounds each year. And they're in the final stages of research and development on several new Asian carp-based products, including hot dogs.
It's something the company hopes will open the door to Asian carp for many skeptical consumers. The toughest challenge, I would say, is just changing the perspective and just getting people to try, to try the fish. The company is fully invested in marketing Asian carp products like salami, bologna, and even Asian carp jerky. Here at the Taste of Chicago, the city's largest food festival, Illinois Department of Natural Resources, working with its partners, has found a surefire way of getting people to try it by grilling it up and giving it away. You mentioned the word carp, and people make a face first, and then I can convince them to try it, and then they go into the store and buy it. Free food means long lines and open minds. It's really fantastic. It's really well seasoned, and it's moist. It's yummy. People should try it. In case it catches on, scientists are also studying the long-term prospects of keeping up with potential demand. It tastes good. It tastes good. <laughs> James Garvey is the director of the Center for Fisheries, Aquaculture, and Aquatic Sciences at Southern Illinois University. See, we got some nice resolution now. Yeah. For the last year, Garvey has been sailing the Illinois River and literally counting Asian carp. Using sophisticated equipment, much like the sonar on a submarine, the team is scanning the waters. The SIU research is important for commercial fishermen because knowing how many fish are in the water is a good indicator of how sustainable an Asian carp business could be in the long run. If you're not going to make any money off the fish, if there's not enough fish out there, nobody's going to invest any money in it. The hope is that by the end of this year, researchers, government agencies and commercial fisheries will each have a better sense of their role in keeping Asian carp out of the Great Lakes by perhaps putting it on your plate.